Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a baby bib and these are for newborn. And for the baby bib I'm going to be using some DK light worsted weight yarn and I've just chosen some blue um, but you can choose pink or yellow or green, whatever you like. I'm also going to be using some white DK light worsted weight yarn as well and that's going to be for the, the edging. And we're going to be using a 4mm G crochet hook and it's also a good idea to have some scissors and a yarn needle which I can't find at the moment where it is. There we go. Okay so let's begin. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crochet 22 double crochet foundation stitches. Now to do a double crochet foundation stitch and this is in US terminology, don't be fooled by the accent, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to chain two to begin. So just one and two. So you just chain two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over as if we're doing a double crochet. We're going to put our hook into that first chain that we did. Just like so. I'm just catching that one bit of yarn there. And we're going to bring the yarn through so we've got three loops. And what we're going to do though is we're going to ch technically chain one first. We're going to yarn over and pull through that first loop like so. And that technically creates, I suppose, our chain as if we were just doing normal chains. And then we've got our three loops left and we're just going to do a normal double crochet. So we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two to do a double crochet. So you've done a chain and a double crochet. And what we're going to do next is we yarn over and on the left hand side over here you should see your chain one stitch that you created. So what we're going to do is just bring our hook down and you want to loop it onto that first bit of yarn and just the other side there's another bit of yarn for your stitch. So there's the stitch you want to work into, just catching two bits of yarn. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, you've got your three loops, and we need to create our chain again. So we yarn over, pull through that first loop, like so. And now we do a double crochet. So we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll see you've created another stitch on the left hand side. I've done a video in more detail on the double crochet foundation stitch, but hopefully this has been slow enough. Um, if you're new to it to so follow along anyway without looking at that. But now we do our next one and we go into this next stitch we created on the left side here. So what I do is I put my hook onto that first bit of yarn and find the second bit, catching two bits. Pull the yarn through, bring it up, keep it quite loose. Uh, not too loose, but uh, keep it a bit loose. Then we yarn over, pull for the first loop to create our chain stitch on the end. Then we do our double crochet, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now you've done three double crochet foundation stitches and then we just carry on until we've done 22. That's what I said, wasn't it? So yarn over, we go into the next stitch on the left side. I'll put a link to my video on the double crochet foundation stitch in more detail in case you want to go watch it. There we go, we just carry on till we've done 22 double crochet foundation stitches, each time working into that stitch we create on the left hand side, putting a yarn through, keeping it a bit loose, yarn over and pull for the first loop to create your stitch so you can work into it and then do your double crochet. So always remember to do that stitch on the side. Okay, so we need 22. Let's go up to the last one, 22. like so. So there we go, you should have 22 double crochet foundation stitches that you've worked, not including your chain 2. Um, if you want to include your chain 2 then you'll have 23 um, stitches in total. Now normally when you've worked double crochet foundation stitches what I do is I tend to turn my work and I work, so we just work that way, I've been working into these stitches down the left hand side. What I normally do is I then turn my work and I work along the stitches on the right right hand side down here 
That's what you would normally do, so you'd like chain one, turn, work across those stitches there on the right hand side. But what I'm actually going to do is I want to work back into these foundation stitches here. And the reason for that is because at the bottom it will create a really nice curve um, to the bib rather than a sort of more sharp corner we've got there. So if you imagine that was at the bottom, it's not as nice. And I, I like this curve here, so I want that on the bottom. So what we're going to do, rather than working into these stitches, we're going to work back into these. So to get our work over this side, what you need to do is to put your hook just neatly into that last double crochet somewhere. So anywhere inside that double crochet last one there. Just stick it in neatly and work a little slip stitch like so. And that should bring you to your first foundation stitch on this side here. And into that first one we're going to do three double crochet. So we need to yarn over. I'm going to put a hook into that stitch like that. We're going to work three double crochet. So we do the first one, just one, and another one in that same foundation stitch. Two, and then another one, three. And this will create even more of a nice curve, but also a little bit of an increase as well, because we want it to sort of come out a little bit. So it's created a nice, nice curve. Then what we're going to do is we're going to work one double crochet in the next, uh, how many is it? In the next 21, uh, 21 foundation stitches across here. So until you've got to the last one. So we're just going to the next foundation stitch, just making sure to go through both bits of loop there. Bring your yarn through and do a double crochet. And just repeat that all the way across to the last stitch. It's just done 20 and then 21. So you should have done one double crochet in the next 21 foundation stitches and that should leave you the one on the very end. And in that last one we're going to do three double crochet to match the other end. So pop your hook in that last one which is really just the first chain you, you did at the very, very beginning. So one, two, and three double crochet all in the same last stitch. Okay, so what we want to do next is we're going to carry on working straight on to the next row now. So this time we're going to chain one. And we're not going to count that as a stitch, it's just going to be a turning stitch. So then we're going to turn our work, we're going to work into these stitches across here with some double crochet. So we go into that very first stitch there and do a double crochet. Then we just do one double crochet into each stitch across. And you should have a stitch count of 26. So that's two, three, 24, 25, and you want 26, so there should be just one on the corner there. And we're going to stop there, because it does look like there's more stitches down there because we slip stitched up. We're going to stop there because we want just 26 we're going to be working with. So it should look a little bit like that. That's the front. So there we go, we've got a much nicer curve around the bottom. And then all we're going to do now is we're just going to repeat that again, the same row. We're just going to chain one. Again, don't count it as a stitch, just use it as a turning stitch. And turn your work. Work a double crochet in that very first stitch that you see. And then one double crochet in each stitch across. So you've still got the stitch count of 26. And we're going to do that for up into row 13, so that's about 10 rows. So your first row is your foundation. So this is your row, this is row four, and you want to do uh, 10 more rows, so it takes you up to row 13. So just repeat doing the chain one, turn, one double crochet 
in each stitch across then chain one turn one double crochet each stitch across so you've still got stitch count of 26 and you want to get up to row 13 so that's 10 more rows so this is your this is your first row as it were of your 10 but your fourth row overall if that makes sense so I'm going to do that and then I shall come back okay so I'm just coming up to the last double crochet okay so you should have reached row 13 you should have reached row 13 by crocheting another 10 rows of just chain one turn don't count it as a stitch and then one double crochet all the way across so you've still got a stitch count of 26 and it should look a little bit like that this should be the front with your beginning tail in the bottom left corner okay so what we're going to do now is untangle the mess Okay, so we're going to chain one and turn again. Um, but this time what we're going to do, we're going to double crochet two stitches together. So to do that we yarn over and go in our first stitch, bring the yarn through. Then we yarn over and pull through two as if doing a double crochet. We're going to stop there. We yarn over again, go into the next stitch, grab the yarn, so you've got four loops. Yarn over, pull through two, so that leaves you three loops, and yarn over, pull through all three. And that double crochets two stitches together. Then we're going to do one double crochet in the next five stitches. So that's the next five. It's just one by itself, the next five. So that's one, two, three. and five and then we're going to double crochet two stitches together again so we yarn over go into the next stitch grab a yarn yarn over pull through two as if doing a double crochet but stop halfway through and yarn over again go into the next stitch pull through so you've got four loops yarn over pull through two loops so you've got three yarn over pull through all three and that completes your double crochet two together and then what we want to do is we want to chain one and we're going to turn and go back in the opposite direction and we're going to start off with double crocheting two stitches together again so we go straight into that first stitch and just double crochet two together again, together again. so stop your neighbor go into the next stitch four loops pull through two your neighbor pull through all three then we do one double crochet in the next three. So that's one by itself. And then one by itself. Then one by itself. And that should leave you with two stitches at the end. So we're going to double crochet those two together as well. So we go into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, stop, yarn over. Go into the last stitch, which is in there somewhere, pull through two, and pull through all three to double crochet two together. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to chain one and turn. We should have a stitch count of five left, and we're going to do one double crochet in each stitch along, so we still have five stitches. So there's our first double crochet. Next one, our next one, then second to last one, four and five in that last one. Okay, so you should have five stitches left. Um, what we're then going to do into those five is we're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to do one double crochet in the first three. So go into that first stitch there and do one double crochet by itself. Then one double crochet in the next stitch. Then one double crochet in the next stitch. And that should leave you with two stitches. And we're going to double crochet those two together. So go into the next stitch, 
pull through, yarn over, pull through two, stop, yarn over, go into the last stitch, it's always a little bit sort of hidden, as long as you're catching both those two bits of yarn, pull through two, so you've got three loops, and pull through all three. And that should reduce your stitch count down to four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to chain one, turn again, and we're going to single crochet two together. So single crochet, and this time we go into the first stitch, grab your yarn, it's the next stitch, grab your yarn, so you've got three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. And we'll do it again in the last two, the next stitch, pull through, and the next stitch, and the last stitch, pull through, pull through, what's going on? Try that again. Three loops, pull through all three. That reduces your stitch count down to two, but we've finished working on this side now. What we actually need to do is you need to work one, uh, some slip stitches down this edge now. So you need to do that just neatly to get you back down to the base down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work some slip stitches. It doesn't really matter how many. Um, I'm actually going to go through the stitch, so rather than finding gaps, I like to go through stitches because that creates a neater edge. Let's so just work a slip stitch. Neatly down the edge. Go through that stitch rather than in the gap. As neatly as you can. I'm sure you can do a better job than me. <laughs> it doesn't really matter where you put the hook, as long as it's near the edge and looks neat. It doesn't matter how many stitches you do. Okay, and eventually you'll come down to a proper stitch there. We can just finish up a slip stitch in that corner, like so. It should look a bit like that. You can probably do a neater job than me. Uh, then we're going to be working in the next stitch from uh, we did that. What row was that? That was row 14. On row 14, and then we stopped and went back. But we're going to carry on. So find that next stitch on uh, row 14. And in there, we're just going to work a single crochet. We're going to do. We want to do a single crochet in the next eight. Uh, so there's our first one, and then go into the next one. Do a single crochet. So that's two, three, four, five. Seven and eight, like so. Okay, so one single crochet in the next eight after that slip stitch in the corner, and that should leave you with nine stitches at the end. And what we want to do now is technically a repeat of row 14 or the beginning of row 14 before we turned. So we want to double crochet two together for two and stop. Over, next stitch, pull through two, pull through three to double crochet two together. Then we do one double crochet in the next five. So, sorry about the background noise. One, <laughs> two, three, four, and five. It's getting quite late now actually, running out of daylight. And that should leave you with two stitches and we want to double crochet those together. So it's the next stitch, pull through two and stop, yarn over. The last stitch, pull through, pull through two, pull through the last three, and like so. And what we're going to do then is we're going to turn our work, chain one, turn, and we're going to double crochet two together. 
let's go into that first stitch, pull through two, and stop. Yarn over to the next stitch, pull through, and pull through two loops, and pull through the last three. Then we're going to do one double crochet in the next three. Let's go into the next stitch and do a double crochet by itself. One. Next stitch, double crochet by itself. Two. And the next stitch, three. And then we want to double crochet two together again. So go into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two, stop, yarn over to the next stitch, pull through two yarn over, pull through all three, like so. We want to stop there because we're going to work on the other uh, strap that goes around the back. Okay, so the next row, what we're going to do is we're going to just undo that because I've already done it. I'm going to chain one and turn again. And we're just going to work one double crochet in each stitch along. So we're keeping a stitch count of five. So that's one. Two, three, four, and five. And we're just going to repeat that same row again. So we chain one, turn, do one double crochet in each stitch across. So it's one, two, Three, four, five, and then we're going to do the same thing again. So chain one, turn, and then one double crochet in each stitch across. You've still got five. One, two, three. and five. Okay, so it should look a little something like that, just three rows of one double crochet in each stitch across. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do, what are we going to do? We're going to, right, we're going to chain one and turn again. And then we're going to double crochet two together. So pull through two, stop, yarn over to the next stitch. Pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to do one double crochet in the next two. So it's one by itself, and one by itself. And that should leave you with one stitch at the end and in that last stitch we're going to do two double crochet so that's two one double crochet and another one in the same stitch so what you've effectively done is you've decreased at the beginning and increased at the end so you've still got a stitch count of five but it's just moving it over a bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn always chain one and turn. Then we're going to start off with two double crochet in that first stitch. So we do one and then another one in the same stitch. And then we do one double crochet in the next two. So that's one by itself in the next stitch and one by itself in the next stitch. And that should leave you with two stitches, one, two. And in those last two we're going to double crochet those together. So go into the next stitch, then pull through two, stop, yarn over, into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two, pull through all three. So you've still got a stitch count of five, so you increase at the beginning and decreased at the end. Now for the next two rows, we're going to do exactly the same again. So you want to repeat those last two rows. So we chain one and turn, and then we're going to double crochet two together. Oops. Stop, yarn over. It's the next stitch. For two, pull for three. So we've done our decrease. Then we do one double crochet in the next two. One and 
another one in the next stitch and then it leaves us one stitch and we do two double crochet for an increase in that last stitch so there's one and go back into the same stitch let's do another one a bit better than I just did <laughs> so you still got stitch count of five and then again we chain one turn but this time we do two double crochet increase at the beginning. So that's one, then another one in the same stitch. Then we do one double crochet in the next two. So that's one by itself. Then one by itself in the next stitch. That leaves us two where we do a decrease. So double crochet two together. Going over to the next stitch. Pull through two, pull through all three. And that decreases. Okay, so what you can see has happened is you've just gone up straight and then you can see it starting to curve around. And the idea being is we can have it curve around as best we can to the other side. So moving on to the next row, we're going to do something slightly different now. We're going to chain one and turn but we're still keeping a stitch count of five what we're going to do is we're going to double crochet two stitches together but we're going to do it twice this time so we go into the first stitch grab the yarn pull through two and stop yarn over next stitch pull through two pull through three so that double crochets two together and we're going to repeat it do it again so the so next stitch pull through two stop yarn over next stitch pull through two, pull through all three, and that double crochets another two together. So now we've reduced it down to two. So in the last stitch, we're going to do three double crochet. So we do one, and then another one in the same stitch. Then another one in the same stitch. Okay, so you've decreased twice, and then increased with three, three double crochet all in the last stitch. And then the next row, chain one and turn. This time we're going to start off with three double crochet in that first stitch. So go into that first stitch. We'll do three double crochet. So there's one, another one in the same stitch, two, and then another one in the same stitch, three. So we've got our three in there. That leaves us with four, we're going to double crochet two together twice. So into the next stitch, pull through two, stop, yarn over, next stitch, pull through two, pull through three. That leaves us two stitches, we double crochet those together as well, pull through two, stop, yarn over to the last stitch, pull through two, pull through all three. So you've decreased twice and then you've done three at the beginning, so your stitch count is still five. And then what we're going to do, so the next, the next uh, row, so now we're going to move on to row 30. So rows 30 to 37, so that's 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, so that's the next eight rows. You want to repeat the last two rows. So for the next eight rows, you want to repeat the last two rows. And those last two rows are, so let's do the next eight, uh, the next two rows just to show chain one and turn and you want to double crochet two together once and then again double crochet two together and then three double crochet All in the same stitch, so that's one, two, and three. So that's that first row, and then chain one, turn. Then this row we do the three double crochet at the beginning. One, two, three. 
you've got three double crochet all in the same stitch leaves us with four and we want to double crochet two together twice so double crochet two together over the next two and then double crochet the last two together so these two rows of decreasing twice and then doing three double crochet and then the next row three double crochet decrease twice we now we've done another two rows so now I want to do that over the next six rows okay so that's the next six rows so you want to decrease twice three double crochet three double crochet decrease decrease twice then you want to double cro decrease twice three double crochet three double crochet decrease twice and then once more decrease twice three double crochet three double crochet decrease twice so okay so the next six rows you want to repeat those two rows and uh, then I guess so I'm going to do that I'll do it on camera and uh, yeah let's do that. Just do up the stitch count of five, and as you can see, we lay this down. Oops, not the camera. Is you can see that curves around a lot more. Okay, so what we're going to do now is now that you've done that, is we're just going to do a little sort of rounded fat part on the end. Oh, my last decrease just come undone. Let's do that again. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to chain one and turn again. Always chain one and turn on a new row. And we're going to start off with a three double crochet in our first stitch. Let's do three double crochet. That's one, two, and three. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to do one double crochet in the next stitch. Just one double crochet by itself. And in the next stitch we're going to do three double crochet. So one, another one in the same stitch, and another one in the same stitch. So you've got three on the same one. Then one double crochet by itself. That should leave you with one stitch and that last one we want to do three double crochet and this should take your stitch count up to 11 so that's one two and three okay so that should take your stitch count up to 11 and moving on to row 39 we chain one and turn and we start off with double crocheting 
two together. So we're going to do a decrease now. So into the first stitch, pull through two, stop yarning, uh, stitch, pull through two, pull through three. I'm going to do one double crochet in the next seven. That's so one, two, three, four, Seven. That should leave you with two stitches. In those last two, we want to double crochet those together. Let's go into the next stitch, grab the yarn, pull through two, stop, yarn over. To the last stitch, grab the yarn, pull through two, pull through three. And that will reduce your stitch count down to nine. And then the last row, row 40, we're going to chain one and turn in the opposite direction. And we're going to double crochet two together twice. So go to the first stitch, pull through two, stop, yarn over to the next stitch, pull through two, pull through three. So double crochet two together, and we do that again to the next stitch, pull through two, stop, yarn over to the next stitch, pull through two, pull through three. So you double crochet two together twice. Then we do one double crochet in the next stitch by itself. Just one, just one. That leaves us with four, and we're going to double crochet two together twice again. Let's double crochet those two together, and then double crochet the last two together. Okay, so that finishes the bulk of our bib like so and you've got like a fatter part on the end here and uh, let's get this camera in a better position move that down a bit so there we go as you can see when you flatten that out obviously it will curve around the back of the neck like so and you could either on this part you can either add velcro sew on some velcro which might be the easiest option or you could use a little, um, uh, you could use a button obviously, or you could use one of those little popper fasteners as well if you want to. I think I vote for Velcro because it's quick and easy. <laughs> but what we're going to do now, just to finish off the bib, is we're going to work one single crochet neatly around the whole edge. We're going to start off doing that in the blue. So putting our hook back in. Literally just going to go around the whole edge of the bib all the way around as neatly as you can, just doing one single crochet in the blue. And the reason we start off with blue is because um, because we're doing this neatly to begin, we don't have stitches to work into. It just means that using a similar colour, it means it will hide any sort of how can I describe it? It'll just make it look a bit neater than if you went straight into using the white. You would see, um, you would see how crocheting it wouldn't look as neat. If that makes sense. Uh, it's getting late. I'm tired. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work. It doesn't really matter how many stitches you do. All I recommend is rather than going into gaps there, I would go in, into actual stitches because that does make it neater. And then we're just going to work single crochets Oops. neatly around the edge all the way back to the beginning so you want to go around the whole of the bib ok so I'm going to do that just working random single crochets around the edge as neatly as I can and then I shall come back and show you what to do next OK, so eventually you're going to get back to the top of this last bit you worked on and there's stitches um, already across the top there so you don't need to single crochet back to there to get a neat edge. But you should be able to see, if I turn over, that just by doing the blue, working single crochet neatly around the edge, it creates a much nicer finish 
like so and I've just worked it all the way around it's always a pleasure when you hit the bottom or hit there where there's actually stitches to work into but uh, hopefully you don't find that too difficult uh, what we're going to do now is simply join the white yarn make it out of a tangled mess okay so I've got to about here and then I'm just going to put my hook into an actual stitch the next stitch and I'm going to bring in the white so instead of grabbing the blue I'm going to put the white on my hook and bring that through like so just pull the tail end of the blue tight so you should be now working with the white so all you need to do now is literally go around each stitch in the white and what you might like to do so it doesn't um, create this kind of effect um, how can I explain it, well you need to pop it inside and out so it gets a bit sort of curling in it's all you need to do is on the edges just work extra stitches so instead of just doing one uh, in each stitch on the corner you might want to say work two so it works flatter so I will come back to that edge at the end but so for example when I get to this corner in the white I might just want to work two stitches in one and what that'll do is it'll just flatten the edge a bit more you should be able to naturally see if you need to work extra stitches or not so it's slightly leaning over so I just want to curve it around so I'll put two in there and then I can see that's moving over nicely so I just need to do one in the next stitch and so on and so forth. And as you can see that creates a much flatter edge. So I'm just going to work a one single crochet in each stitch around or I may do extra on the corners and, uh, and then I'll come back and show you the finished bib. Okay. Okay so I'm just going back around to the beginning and on these corner ones I want to add some extra stitches so I do to that last one. And then when I get back to the beginning I'm just going to put it my yarn in there and I'm just going to slip stitch into that first proper stitch just pull my tail ends tight and there we go so I'm going to just trim that down cut all my, all my ends off bring that through and there we go there's our finished bib I just need to tie in tie in my tail ends and uh, yeah so I'll just do that I'll just tie in my tail ends and I shall come back and show you the finished bib okay so I've tied in all my tail ends and there is the finished bib and then when that's a round baby I'll just go round the shoulders and then the idea will be is I'm going to sew some velcro onto here and to here and then that'll just stick nicely around little baby's neck so there we go so i hope you enjoyed that tutorial i hope you managed to follow along i'll show you what i mean with regards to the velcro with a non-crochet bib that i have here different style so there we go just the simple velcro it's much easier than fiddling with buttons especially when these get very dirty <laughs> so there we go i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and um yeah, uh, on another note, with regards to the letters, last Friday I did some letters, crochet letters, A, B and C. Uh, thanks for your suggestions for letters, by the way. What I'm actually going to do is, um, so that people that aren't interested in letters don't get bored of Yarn Scrap Friday, because if I do letters every Friday, then that's going to be a few weeks of letters and numbers. Uh, I'm actually just going to do random letters, uh, video tutorials, um, anyway that I'll just post up um, on various days it might be Friday might be other days so I'm actually going to be starting off with the letter D I think is going to be the next one as you can see it's here in the making letter D so I shall be sharing that video very very soon and yeah I think that's about it oh another thing if you haven't watched my video about my competition that's happening at the moment I'm giving away some yarn, some local British Worcestershire lovely wool, it's 100% wool 
um, for some local sheep. Um, if you're interested in winning this yarn, uh, anyone can enter wherever you are in the world. I will post to you whether you're in Timbuktu or just down the road. So if you want to go enter, just check out my website at happyberry.co.uk and there'll be a image on the home page which will take you directly to the competition and all you need to do is enter your name and email address uh, your email address is only used to contact the winner for their address and um, yeah you can subscribe to my newsletter if you wish or if you wish not <laughs> um, so yeah good luck if you enter the competition and I shall see you next Friday for some more actually I might see you before then with the letters for some more crochet fun cheers guys thanks for watching bye